Okay, so this is just a short revision lesson on how to do addition reactions. So I've chosen the most basic type of addition that you can actually do. Uh, that is to add some hydrogen to some ethene. You'll notice that there's two reactants. Uh, one of them is unsaturated. And we're going to add the two together, as the name says. So when you do an addition reaction, you've got to remember that you've got an unsaturated compound over here. There we go. And let's just point that out for a second. An unsaturated compound means that there is a double bond inside there. That double bond means that these two carbon atoms can hold something extra. So in an addition reaction, what you're going to do is you're going to give those carbons something extra to hold on to. So when we draw the product, it's actually quite easy to see what happens. We've got to make sure that we've got those two carbons, the original two carbons, but they've got their original hydrogen still attached to them as well. Except there's one difference. Instead of a double bond, there is now a single bond between them. And what we've got at the top here is we've got those two new hydrogens. Now, as with anything in organic chemistry, it's all about spotting the patterns. We started out with an unsaturated compound. That means that I've got a double bond over there. And unsaturated means that these carbons can actually hold on to something extra. So unsaturated means double or triple bonds. And then in our product, we have made a saturated compound. So when you're looking for the pattern of an addition reaction, it's fairly easy to see that you'd go from an unsaturated to a saturated compound and that you would go from many reactants to very few reactants. This particular one needs a little bit of extra help from a catalyst and the catalyst that's very commonly used to make hydrogen stick to things, you might remember this from um, other sections inside chemistry, hydrogen really likes to stick to platinum as a catalyst. Uh, platinum is particularly good because it helps hydrogen break up and gets it ready for addition. Now you'll notice in your textbook as well, each one of the addition reactions has actually got a name. And uh, you can see the name that I've written up on the screen there, and uh, that is hydrogenation. So what you're going to do is, to name an addition reaction, you need to name the thing which is uh, treating your organic compound. So I'm treating this organic compound with hydrogen, so hydrogen. So hydrogenation is the treating of an organic compound with a little bit of hydrogen. So that's really not too tough. I want to see if you can do a couple of other types, so uh, make sure that you're practicing with me. Let's try a few other types of addition reactions. So here we've got an example where we're going to add a halogen. So I hope that you can see from the word that I've chosen here. Halogenation. So halogenation is the treatment of an unsaturated compound with a halogen. And we've chosen bromine in this case. So halogenation is a very, very common thing. This doesn't need a catalyst at all. In fact, this reaction goes really, really quickly at room temperature with no catalyst. Can you draw the product? And uh, if you think you can, and I recommend that you do, um, try and draw the product with this video paused. When you pause the video, try to predict the product and even name the product. And we're going to do that together. So here's your opportunity to pause now. If you've managed to draw exactly the same molecule as me, uh, you've got it absolutely correct. I've got these two new bromine atoms. There they are. They were adding by breaking the bonds between them. I break the double bond in between these two carbon atoms and I'm left with a single bond. So I've gone from a double to a single bond. This is definitely an example of an addition reaction. And I've added on two new things over there, the two bromine atoms over there. Now, I hope that you tried to name this thing. I've got two carbons, so this is eth. And because it is a single bond, it is ethane. And furthermore than that, it's not just ethane. It is 1,2 dibromoethane. I know that's a mouthful, but let's write it down and let's see what it looks like. Just check that you've written this down correctly. There we go. The correct name's up there. 1, 2, dash, dibromoethane. So you can see that there's 1, 2, so there's something on the first and the second carbon. There we go. On the first and the second carbon. Dibromo tells me that I'm looking for two bromine atoms. So dibromo, there we go. There's one bromo. There's another bromo and eth, one, two carbons, 
and they are single bonded to each other. So 1, 2 dash dibromoethane is the name of our compound. We're going to try another one and I want to see if you can do this as well. Um, another example of halogenation is when we're adding chlorine to things. So this very commonly happens. I'm pretty sure that you can figure out what's going on, but we're going to change things very, very slightly. So get that pencil ready. Let's practice. Okay, so in this example, um, I've confused things slightly. What I've got here is I've got Cl2, which is diatomic, but I haven't drawn it very nicely. And something else to confuse things is I've put the double bond on something which is a little bit longer. Now, how do I know which carbon atoms to join onto? The double bond is the giveaway. I've got a double bond between these two carbon atoms, and that's where I'm going to put my two chlorine atoms. So again, pause the video and see if you can figure out what happens after the arrow and what my product is. And if you're feeling brave, uh, try and name this thing. And let's see where we go with that. Okay, so there we go. We've added the two chlorine atoms. There we go. So those two Cl atoms, even though they weren't drawn very nicely, are going to add on to these two carbon atoms on the end there by breaking the double bond between them. So now you can see that there's a single bond between them and there's a chlorine atom on each one of these. So I've got this now saturated compound. I hope that you're picking up that there's a pattern. I'm going from many reactants down to one product. And that's the giveaway that I'm doing an addition reaction. You're going to reduce the amount of molecules that you've got over there. Well, the number of molecules. So let's name our molecule that we've landed up with at the end. I know that I've got one, two, three, prop. They are single bonded propane. But on the first and the second, and you might be asking why the first and the second, but I must number my carbon atoms so that I've got the smallest possible numbering scheme. And that means that the carbon is on the first and the second. If you start numbering from the left, you're going to land yourself in trouble. And I want you to constantly practice your naming here. So 1, 2, dash, dichloro, because there are two chlorine atoms. So dichloro, please excuse my writing. So dichloro, and this is 1, 2, 3, propane. And that gets us to the end of another type of halogenation. Now we're going to concentrate on a slightly more complex version where we add in some hydrogen and a halogen together. We call that hydrohalogenation. So get those notes ready. Let's do this. Okay, guys. Um, so hydrohalogenation. So let's start off with the name of hydrohalogenation. It's probably one of the longest uh, chemical processes that you'll that you'll learn, or at least the longest name. But it comes from adding the hydrogen. So there's hydrohalogen. So there's hydrogen and a halogen. So here we've got hydrogen and a halogen. So we're going to do hydrohalogenation with HCl. So we're going to keep this fairly simple, but uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can actually do this because uh, there's a double bond in there and that means that this double bond is going to break. I'm going to add H onto the Cl and uh, sorry, not H onto the Cl, but H onto the carbon over there and the Cl onto that carbon over there. And um, again, I want you to predict the products, try it out, name it if you want, and I, I recommend that you name it every time. So once again, we should have two carbon atoms. You can't lose any carbon atoms in an addition reaction. So we've got one, two, the original hydrogen atoms are there. And the only addition is that there is a single bond between these two carbon atoms. Don't forget all four bonds. And we've got the new hydrogen on top, but also we've got the new Cl on the top. So these two are new atoms that has been added. Okay, so this is hydrohalogenation. Now, a lot of metrics ask, is this as complex as it gets? Um, unfortunately not. There's, there's always complications because H and Cl are not the same. What happens if um, adding them in a different order can make two different products? And we're going to talk a little bit about Markovnikov's rule in a moment. Now, if you didn't catch that name, that is Markovnikov. And uh, we're going to write it down, and we're going to talk about Markovnikov's rule in a second. Now, just to plant the idea, I just want to talk to you about a compound which is not the same, uh, depending on which way you add the HCl. So we're going to draw a three-carbon compound. Um, let's actually make that black. Let's make it nice and visible. So here we go. So one, two, three carbon atoms. And you might ask what's so special about that. But I'm going to put a double bond at the end. Now, you can actually make two very different products out of this, 
when you do um, addition of HCl to this compound. So what I've drawn here is propionine or uh, one propene, depending on how you want to say it, both are accepted. Now what's going to happen is we're going to make two very different products and I want you to try figure out which ones they are. So you can add HCl in two different ways. So you can add it, um, let's actually draw it in two different colors. So I can draw HCl, you know, the way that I say it, so HCl in that way. Or, and uh, just to be really annoying, um, I can draw it in the opposite direction. I can draw Cl on the left and H on the right. And both of these is going to produce a slightly different product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of time now and try and add it in the green way, try and add it in the red way and see which products you get. There are two very different products. Now in a real chemical laboratory you'll make both of these but you'll make more of one of these than the other and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that in a moment. Okay, so there we have the two products. I've got the one where uh, the green, the Cl, adds onto the middle carbon, so over there. So I've got Cl joining onto that middle carbon over there with chlorine bonding onto the middle carbon or chlorine bonding onto the end carbon. Now, when you do this reaction, you'll actually find that both happen at the same time. Now, now these are not equally favored. Uh, there is actually a preference in chemistry. When... Uh, you've got something which is not the same on both sides and this is what I mean H and Cl are very different atoms so what you'll find is that the larger of the two so between hydrogen and chlorine the larger of the two will choose to go to the position where the carbon is the most substituted now what I mean by that is uh, this is going to require a little bit of revision but um, primary and secondary carbons you know, talk about how many other carbon atoms they're joined onto. Let me show you what I mean. The carbon atom at the end over here, that is a primary carbon, so I'll put one prime over there. This carbon in the second spot is a secondary carbon because it's got one, two carbons attached to it. So now when the chlorine is choosing, it will choose a secondary carbon. So that means the carbon in the middle. So this chlorine likes the carbon which is the most popular and that's the way I remember this. So that means that the green product will be what's known as my major product. That means that I will make more of this where the chlorine has chosen the middle, middle spot. Whereas the bottom piece that is going to be my minor product meaning that I make less of the substance because the chlorine doesn't like the carbon at the end with the least amount of friends. And that is an example of Makovnikov's rule. Now Makovnikov's rule says that the larger of the two which you add will choose the carbon with the most friends or substitutions. So let's see if you've learned all of that and let's see if you can do, do an addition reaction of water. And water is hydration. So let's take a look at a hydration reaction where you can make two particular products and let's see if you know Makovnikov's rule. Okay, uh, so Makovnikov's rule when it applies to hydration. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you know what hydration is, but you've probably never thought about it in a chemistry context. Hydration is the treatment of something using water itself. Now, I don't know how many people, uh, you know, don't know this, but H2O is actually made up of two parts, and these parts are a hydrogen and an oxygen and another hydrogen. Now, in organic chemistry, very often you see uh, water is being split up into H and OH. You'll know that from acids and bases. The H plus and the OH minus can be separated from one another. But the way that this adds on is quite tricky when you do hydration using Makovnikov's rule. Now, H2O doesn't simply add on to organic chemicals. It really doesn't like doing this. So when we make our two potential products, uh, it does actually require a little bit of convincing. And um, again, we're going to use a catalyst. The catalyst for water is H2SO4. Now, if you know anything about the contact process, you'll know that H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is very good at helping water get onto things and get off things. And uh, here we go, there's two products. I want you to predict the major product and the minor product. We're going to pause for a second and I recommend that you do this as well. Predict the products, name them if you want, and we'll see if you're correct. 
Okay, so if you took the obvious route and you added the water exactly as you saw it over there, you got propane one ol, which is uh, you know one of the products. You definitely do produce propane dash one dash ol. So that means an ol or a hydroxyl on the first carbon atom of the chain. What is our other product? Um, slightly less obvious. You've got to think a little bit outside the box, and you've got to realize that water can add the other way. With um, the oxygen being the bigger of the two, um, I'm hoping that you can see that you're actually going to make a second product, and that is propane 2 -ol. Let's draw that, and let's see if you can identify where the OH and where the H go. Okay, so there you've got it, propane 2 -ol. Uh, let's just make sure that everyone can name these things, uh, making sure that you understand that propan means that we've got three carbon atoms all single bonded to one another, so that's common to both of these compounds. But in the first compound, we've got OH, and uh, that's on the first carbon atom. So there we go, first carbon atom, that's propan 1 ol. For the second one, we've got, uh, we've got that second carbon over there with the ol on the end over there. And um, I'm just going to highlight where the water is. The water which was added is over there. Now you'll notice that it's in two particular orientations. Now, the bigger out of those two is the OH. So the OH is going to prefer to go to the carbon which is the most substituted. So the major product is propan 2 -ol. Now, in papers, they won't ask you what Markovnikov's rule is, but they will ask you to draw the major product it's very seldom that they ask you to draw the minor product. Now the minor product, and that looks like mirror, but uh, minor product means that I produce a lot less of that.